Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The latest Fury Grappling event featured some of our favorite athletes like J-Rod and Sophia Casella, who we previously did a video on, so if you're not a fan, check that video out and I guarantee you will be. The event also consisted of people who we normally don't see grappling, like Clay Guida, and this led to a very great event that I'm excited to dive into with you all. Right now I'm right in the middle of releasing a three part series on attacking the back. And I hope you guys don't mind. I'm gonna use the first part of this video as a little promo to that. So if you guys have been following along, you know that from the overhook side, it's very hard to turtle. And if you do end up turtling, it's most likely gonna end in you getting finished. And if we find ourselves turtling from the overhook side, it's most likely because we're trying to use our foot to remove their hook. Now, as our opponent is threatening a rear naked choke, they take out their top hook and try and use it to keep us on the overhook side. But we are able to successfully switch sides and our opponent is able to successfully reestablish her underhook. So we're back on the overhook side a second time, but this time we're already past our opponent's bottom hook. So this allows us to get our back to the mat and facilitate our escape. Now, if you notice from the overhook side, as we're trying to get our back to the mat, our opponent actually takes their own top hook out and tries to use it to reestablish control. However, if we find ourselves in the exact same leg configuration from the underhook side, she does not remove her top hook. And instead, she shoots it in deeper and switches back to the overhook side. We have talked about in our series on attacking the back. If we're on the underhook side from a defensive perspective, how we can use our secondary hand to free that top hook. And that's exactly what Sophia is trying to do. She has her primary defensive hand in place and she's trying to use her secondary hand to clear that top hook. But I do think it's very important the way you grab that top hook to try and clear it. You can see Sophia initially takes kind of a shallow grip on the bottom of her opponent's foot. It would be much stronger if she took kind of a toe hold grip. And now obviously she wouldn't be taking that grip with the intention of finishing her opponent, but she just wants to prevent her opponent from being able to straighten her leg. But because Sophia's grip was a bit shallow, her opponent's able to straighten straighten her hook and sink it in deep. And now Sophia reaches with a V grip on the Achilles. And I think what she would like to do is straighten her leg and push her opponent's leg to make that hook slip right off. But her opponent is back healing really strong and that allows her to have a nice smooth pivot, switching to the other side, making that top hook now her bottom hook. Now, if that piqued your interest, consider subscribing and checking out our series on attacking the back. Now in martial arts in general, it's very important to control your opponent's head. And if we're able to control our opponent's head when passing the guard, it often leads to a successful guard pass. However, oftentimes I think people get too much tunnel vision on controlling the head. And if we leave our hands up by our opponent's head and neglect to control the hips, we're gonna allow them more space to move. Whereas if we make the transition from north south back to side control and we make sure to cover our opponent's hips, when they try to turtle, it's gonna be very difficult for them to get away from us. Now, one of the more popular forms of passing right now is the body lock pass. And its success is reliant upon us controlling our opponent's hips. And if our hands start to drift up towards our opponent's head, it can lead to very bad things like shoulder crunches. And if we try and pull away from a shoulder crunch, that can put us in a triangle. So you can see we're just kind of digging the hole deeper and deeper. And it all started because our hand was up by our opponent's head. Now, a lot of times after a successful body lock pass, it's difficult to transition up to the head and establish the classical form of side control. Now, if your opponent just hugs you, it makes life a lot easier. But a lot of times they're going to be framing and pushing your head away. It makes it very tough to transition up to control of their head. So this dilemma right here has been one of my favorite things to do, where if your opponent just kind of chills on their back and doesn't really do anything or is attempting to turtle, you slide your knee through and put them in a leg drag scenario. And if they're chilling from there, then you can work to get your upper body grips and work to get past their guard in a very controlling manner. Or if they decide to turtle from there, you're going to have a very good chance to take their back. If we're wrapped around our opponent's hips, the other option they have is to turn into us. And this can either be with the goal of just shrimping to bring their knee back inside, or they're literally trying to turn back into us like we see here. And as they do, a great option is the step over their legs. And this is something Khabib made very popular in the UFC. And basically we're emulating that in submission grappling. And man, I've just found it to be an amazing way to just ride your opponent's legs and kind of force them to make some silly mistakes. And of course I had to sneak in this clip of Gordon Ryan here. Because 
because our goal on this channel is to bring to light the common trends that are working at the highest level. And what that often means is just studying the greatest no-gi grappler, which is Gordon Ryan. And since Gordon Ryan gets a lot of screen time on this channel, so does future kimonos, which is why I thought it would be mutually beneficial for me to partner with them. And if you're interested in any of their gear, there's a discount code in the description below. And hopefully soon we'll be on my website, but that's still a working progress. But now let's get back to leg riding. So if you're really, really smooth, you can start with an arm drag, go to a single leg, and then switch to a double leg to complete the takedown right into this leg ride scenario. And again, if we get too antsy and run up towards the head, that is what gives our opponent the ability to turtle, as opposed to just smashing their hips and working your way slowly up towards control of their head. But your primary focus is slowing them down through your control of their hips. So now just a couple little general tips to close out the video, starting with just the idea that we need to be a little careful when passing someone's guard because we can put ourselves right into leg entanglements like 50-50. And I found myself doing this a lot when I transitioned from a school that was primarily gi to a school that had just a bunch of assassins no gi. I would just toriando myself right into 50-50 and get heel hooked. And this is a really good example of how this might play out because heel hooks were illegal in this match. And Clay Guida just kind of steps himself right into 50-50, but there aren't any repercussions because heel hooks are illegal. But it is something we need to keep in mind when we're developing our passing sequences no gi. We should always try to have control over our opponent's legs or hips like we talked about previously. Now, if you saw this match here, you know that it was pretty boring, honestly. And it was a lot of just sitting in butterfly half guard waiting for something to happen. And the announcers kept commenting on this right knee, making such a solid frame and making it difficult for his opponent to pass. But while it is a great tool for maintaining your guard, it also prevents you from getting underneath your opponent, which is what we would need to do if we wanted to enter into their legs. So sometimes we need to give our opponent a little bit. We need to let them get past one of our frames so that we can facilitate our entry into their legs. And yes, that means taking a little bit of a risk because you're letting your opponent get past a little bit of your defenses to facilitate your attack. And this doesn't just apply to leg locks. We know that from a guard passing perspective, we want our arm inside our opponent's leg. So the top person right now won that battle, but maybe it's just because the bottom person let them win that battle to set up an arm drag. So the point is that sometimes it's okay for your opponent to progress a little bit because they could be very confidently walking into one of your attacks. So again, that's just a little something to keep in mind when you're developing your attacking sequences. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Consider subscribing and checking out our series on attacking the back as well as our sponsors in the description below. And we'll see you in the next video.